American Christians have been disarmed. Many people don't even know that. Um, you say, how so? Well, there's the actual physical, temporal disarming, where a lot of these church buildings are that are 501c3 and incorporated under the IRS code there. They're actually federal property. Uh, sorry about the wind. Um, but these church buildings, a lot of them, if you actually check into it, they're actually called gun-free zones. And they will openly say, you are not allowed to bring a, a firearm to the church there. So in that sense, they have been uh, disarmed um, in a temporal sense. You can't have weapons in these church buildings. I wouldn't go near a place that tells me I can't have a weapon any way to defend myself with all the psychos running around this nation right now. Um, so there's that. Uh, but there's a spiritual as aspect to the Christians being disarmed. You say, how's that? Uh, well, the King James Bible was taken away from people. Um, it's been a long plan, over 100 years in the making. Uh, a better translation would be we have more accurate manuscripts and older, more you know, ancient authorities and witnesses and whatever else like this. And most people don't even bother to check into it. They don't even bother to look into it and say, oh, you know what, it's actually a scam. Um, the more ancient manuscripts and whatever else, all those readings were around when they made the King James Bible. I've proved that in some of my studies. Uh, there isn't any new material that they came out with. Uh, that's a lie. It's nonsense. But uh, a lot of people just, uh, you know, it's not a big deal. They're carrying around Bibles. They, did, they don't even know where it came from. You know, you say to the average Christian, where'd your Bible come from? They say, the store. Uh, you know, no, I'm saying, where did it come from? New Testament is finished in the first century there, 90 AD or so, with John and the book of Revelation. Um, what happened from then until you got that one in your hands there? They have no idea. They don't know the history of Bible translation and Bible manuscripts and manuscript evidence and all the other things, textual criticism and all of that stuff. They just say, well, I trust my pastor. I pay him his salary, you know, and, and he tells me what to believe and whatever, and that's fine for me. I don't need any kind of personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's just, you know, kind of go through my uh, local church. <laughs> um, so let me challenge you out there. Do you know where your Bible comes from? Whatever version you use, what's the history of it? Who translated it? Where was it translated? What manuscripts did it, was it translated from? Huh. Interesting. Why is it that the King James Bible, written between 1604 and 1611, why is it that it was a great Bible for hundreds of years and all of a sudden uh, something like 200 new versions had to be written in about 120 years? Isn't that kind of odd? I mean, doesn't that kind of make you want to scratch your head a little bit? I wonder why they had to all of a sudden update it with over, you know, something like 200 or whatever versions, and they're still bringing them out. Why? All of a sudden, it's no good anymore. So, um, if you don't understand the issue, I'll put some links at the end of this thing. Um, but if you want a really interesting uh, scripture, if you want to understand uh, prophecy about the end times, um, you can look up Amos chapter 8, verses 11 and 12, where it talks about God actually sends a famine uh, of hearing the word of God and that people would wander from sea to sea to f find it and everything else, you know, going all over the place, not quoting it exactly, and they're trying to seek the word of the Lord and they, and they can't find it. Hmm, how many real King James Bible believing ministries are out there right now? Not very many. An interesting thing. Uh, so either you have to say we're not really in the end times or well we're in the end times but that's talking about something else it's it's symbolic <laughs> uh, no it's not symbolic it's a prophecy that's literally taken place so please watch the videos at the end of this study so that you aren't disarmed spiritually and you shouldn't be physically either